Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And now we are in chapter number nine. And uh, remember, this is just uh, one portion of our training, our free training in uh, YouTube. So you, if you want to start from the beginning, you can go to our YouTube channel and start. Uh, you know, it's all a, a mini training about the fundamentals of Maya 2013. So now let's talk about uh, illumination. All right. And what we can do with illumination is actually illuminate and uh, change the mood of our objects. Right now we actually have illumination. That's why we have this kind of cool uh, highlights and these kind of shadows in our objects. But for example, if I go here to my render options and if I go here to render options, I believe uh, and if I disable this option, if I when check this option, I, I won't be able to, to have uh, lights. And now what happens if you don't have lights? Well, this is our previous render. I'm going to store this image too also. This is number one. That was number two. So let's store this and then I'm going to create a new render. Now if I create a new render without light, that is uh, what we have. We have nothing. That's why light is very important because otherwise we are you don't see anything, all right? You need light. Uh, even if it's from the sun, from uh, a light bulb, uh, it doesn't matter what type of light, if it's warm, if it's cold, it doesn't matter. You need light in order to see. And that's the same thing that is going to happen here inside Maya. We need light. So right now we have something. We have a light, a default light inside our viewport, but it's turned off because right now in our render, the render, mo the motor, uh, the engine is not looking at that. So uh, what we need is a new light. So how can we create lights? We will go to the rendering option, okay? And now inside this area, you will see the main uh, uh, options that we have for lighting. And I'm saying some of the options because we can illuminate, uh, create illumination with a lot, uh, with other uh, objects. It's not all about uh, lights like this. We can. Uh, create uh, what we call indirect illumination and then there's a lot of different effects that we can uh, create uh, based on lightning effects but for now let's keep things simple we're going to talk about lights not I, I shouldn't say illumination uh, it, we will talk about we're going to talk about lights all right that's the that's what we're going to be doing so let's create a light the first one that we have here is the ambient light and if i click on the ambient light you will see I have something that looks like a light bulb and it has uh, some kind of uh, lines pointing to every single direction and that is because that this type of line is emitting line to every single direction just like the way it is uh, representing with that graphic so now if I take my render view and I click and render now you you can see that we have something here we have something pretty cool and we have light which means that's awesome now you can see I'm selecting the light and that the position of this object uh, is affecting how the the light is affecting our other uh, our scene. If I take this light and I go higher and I generate another render, I'm going to store this one. I'm going to generate another render. You can see that right now it looks like almost the same, but the position of the light is actually giving us different results. Okay, just like uh, you would expect if you were moving that light in real life. So that's why it's very important to, to know how to manipulate lights because it's just like in, in the real world. So render, now we have something different. Now this is cool. What I want to do is show you some of the parameters that we have here. So I have my ambient light and I have my transform attributes. It's remember my holder. Then we have the ambient light shape which which is also uh, remember when we start working with our parametric objects imagine that this is our first parameter and here we're going to specify the color of our light so I can change it to something like bluish and a little bit you know just a little bit and that will give us the sensation of um, darkness or you know night time or something like that and just by tweaking that we are changing the mood of our lights which is awesome now we can change the intensity and now if I come back here and reduce the intensity it's like changing the how many watts we have in that light bulb so I can make it 20 watts all right and that way I'm gonna store this one I'm gonna render that and now you can see we have less illumination but still we are getting something now I can change that to uh, 50 
oops, not 50, but I mean 0.50 or 0.5, and then we will store that one, and there we go. So we have more uh, a more powerful kind of uh, light effect. Now, if we go to five, now this is gonna get a little bit uh, dramatic. <laughs> there we go. We have all this uh, brightness taking over our images, uh, our image. So which is uh, probably sometimes you want to use it for uh, the desired effect that you want to, to achieve but regularly you want to be using this in uh, low values you know like uh, one or less one being I don't know I will say a hundred watts or a thousand watts it all depends on the, the size of your of your scene and the, the type of um, uh, effect that you want to achieve right so let's put that uh, that number in there and then let's try to render one more time and that's what we get so now you can see we have different versions moving the intensity okay and also the position so now lights are very very important but uh, what about uh, shadows without shadows we don't have the sensation of depth and shadows are very very important in in, in film and uh, because they allow us to perceive everything with uh, you know it, it looks more real if you don't have shadows it doesn't look real now obviously there's a lot of uh, things that we can um, do in order to improve that and make it look real but, but for now I will say that uh, just the, the, the touch of shadows will improve this image a lot now let's see how can we do that in this section I have another option called shadows so I can click here and you can see that we have shadow color now right now I have shadow color I can change that I don't know to pink probably and you're gonna expect uh, you're probably gonna expect to see something pink but no we have nothing there now why is that because we need to activate the shadows for this uh, 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 in order to take uh, shadows we need to activate that parameter but that parameter it's uh, well some of the parameters for shadows are inside our lights as you can see I can click on this one and now it says use ray trace shadows so now that I have this active I can probably come and press wow I have nothing still there's nothing showing up here so what I will do is go to my render settings and inside my render settings I have one option uh, called uh, well right now I have the quality I'm just gonna go here and change that to production quality and right tracing quality I'm gonna activate right tracing why because I am activating right trace shadows if I don't activate right tracing I won't be able to use ray trace shadows so I'm gonna click one more time and now you're gonna see that it's taking more time but now you can see that I have shadows or at least that's what I'm what Maya is trying to give me with this parameter and now I change the color so that you can see exactly where the shadows are located all the red areas here are where my shadows are being uh, uh, applied and that's by using these parameters of uh, the, the default parameters now I can come and tweak for example the shadow radius okay and I can go even like 5.5 let me store this one and now let's click and render and that is gonna smooth the transition of, of, of these shadows can you see this is my last the new one so the last one was more like bulky kind of thing and now I'm softening these edges and obviously you can go here and increase that to one I can store this one and let's render one more time and we are softening these edges a little bit more and um, we can store this one and for example if I come here and I type 2 that doesn't matter if, if you go to the end of this that doesn't matter that doesn't mean that it's only uh, you are only allowed to, to put one you can actually take some of these values and go higher in this case I want two alright and now let's try and let's see how that uh, works and I can see a better transition it's a lot definitely a lot better than the first one this is the, the first one with the uh, settings that we had and now this is with the new settings so as you can see the shadow radius is going to allow you to spread that out and make a smooth transition where your shadows are being applied now obviously the color I, I I like to change the color when I'm tweaking my shadows because first of all I want to see where are they hitting and then sometimes if they are black and you have a, a dark uh, area you are not going to be able to see exactly what is happening here so with their with this uh, 
uh, saturated color, I can actually see where all these shadows are hitting. So now we can change that to black, but don't use black, right? In real life, there's no black. There's no such thing. And uh, whatever you can, I mean, if you see anything, whatever, it's not black. It's not completely black, black, pure black. And obviously, if you close your eyes and then turn off the lights and then probably the sun is not hitting and nothing, um, you are in a dark room, you probably can see black. But, you know, black is, I don't know, it's complex, <laughs> believe me. So now we have that option. Then we have how many rays we want to use. And that can allow us to, uh, you know, uh, create a, a better, even better kind of uh, image if we increase that value. Uh, obviously, Maya is going to take longer to, to give you the, the render you want. Now, I, I, I changed the, the values of the color of my shadow. So now you can see how these, uh, the, the the shadows are kind of really smooth and now we have all this uh, spreading out and well I'm gonna change that to the pinky color one more time because I really want you to see what I'm talking about so this is our previous one and now we're gonna change that shadow raise to 12 with the pink pink color and now let's try one more time so that you can see better because that's what I was talking about if you don't have that um, in that color it's uh, more difficult to see um, the, whatever you're tweaking. So now you can see it's taking more time in order to give us that uh, this object. But now if I change, you can see if I get closer to the plane, you can see all this grain, all this kind of uh, noise that we have here. Well, increasing the shadow rays, you will get rid of them. Okay, you will have a nicer transition, but obviously the nicer it looks, the more time it's going to take for uh, for you to, to wait and render. Okay, the computer is going to have to use more power in order to render that. So keep in mind, don't use values like uh, 300 or things like that. And uh, just keep it simple. If you, you if you can see an, any improvement, just keep adding numbers: 12, 13, 14, 2 by 2, etc. It all depends of how how big is your scene, how many lights you have in your scene, the how many objects, how many polygons are uh, creating that object. If you have uh, 2 million polygons, obviously that's not the same as having 200 polygons. So keep all that in mind. Textures and you know it's. Uh, a lot of different things that are involved in uh, on, the, on these parameters of uh, rendering. So now the other option that we have is the ray uh, depth limit and this one uh, allows us to specify how many times we want the, the shadows in this case uh, to bounce. So for example right here I have uh, the shadow comes to the mountain and then if I had a reflective material on this object that shadow it's going to be able to ref uh, be reflected into this object if it, if we had a mirror so probably i can see this shadow on the mirror but if i have only one limit i won't be able to see it on the mirror because i'm only allowing one time to show this uh, a shadow that's what it means it's like uh, how many times is uh, uh, are we allowing this shadow to appear okay how many bounces we can uh, have or something like that. So try to to keep it that way. Now the next thing we have here is the something called the the, the type of light. And now at this point I only show you the the shadows using the right ray shadows, but we have something else. And now I can change into a different type of light. So this is let's store this one. And I'm going to change from ambient light to area light. And now with area light we will get something completely different. You see, and now the area light is represented by this square, and the square is giving us some kind of position. Okay, it's just showing us the direction of that light. Okay, and all that is being emitted in that right direction. It doesn't matter where I move it. Okay, it's always going to be showing us the same direction, it's going to be illuminating the same thing. Now, if you want to illuminate that guy, you want to make him uh, show up in the, in the movie. What we will do is take that and rotate it like this. And now let's see what we have. I'm going to just take that and kind of place it right there. And let's see. 
there we go so as you can see now we have we can see actually that object and we are getting something more interesting shadows are powerful i love shadows because without shadows we won't have access to this type of uh, object now uh, remember we only changed what i did is change i changed the uh, type of light to area light but I mean, if we go to shadows, we can still have access to use depth map uh, shadows, which is another option that we didn't have in the previous option. And, uh, but we still have the use uh, right trace shadows where you're gonna see that some parameters are missing, but sometimes we are adding other parameters to uh, the different type of light. Now you can use depth map shadows, but I don't, um, well, sometimes I recommend you to use that and as you can see it will give you sometimes what you deserve uh, what, what you deserve what you need and sometimes what uh, you don't want so it's all matter of coming and tweaking the parameters it all depends remember your results what are you trying to achieve and in here you have a lot of different parameters you can tweak but the most important one i will say uh, well, I shouldn't say that because, well, the resolution is uh, important because it's the one that is going to, imagine that we are going to, to place a texture and we're going to use a texture in order to create our shadows. So the more information, the more resolution, the better the transition. And that's uh, why the resolution is so important. So you can come here and type a 248 2K uh, texture, for example, and then we can come here and try to, to get that. Right now we get the same kind of result. Nothing is changing. Let's increase the intensity of uh, this light because right now it's too small and then you can start to see how this is a kind of a, bul a bulky uh, kind of shadow where we don't have uh, any transition it's just like plain uh, we are drawing this uh, kind of thing and that's um, that is not something that has to do only with this resolution but I mean we need we have the the filter size where we can increase that uh, the filter and um, all these objects are gonna uh, you know take uh, uh, a big impact in uh, the, the way you are illuminating or affecting your object. Now, for example, I changed that filter to 5, but I can even go to 25 if I want to. Is uh, like I told you, it's not um, that you have to stay with that number. And if I increase that, you will start to see that now I'm getting something a little bit nicer. You, can you see? So I started with 1, then I changed it to a, a low value, and I'm starting to see something smoother but obviously I need to go higher I probably have to go to 50 in this case because of the resolution that I'm using in my uh, shadow and uh, because uh, I know a little bit uh, about these parameters I can go and jump into uh, big values but sometimes it's not uh, necessary so the, 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 the great thing will be going from 25 30 and then if you compare your images and then if you are seeing something changing then you will definitely change more and more. But if uh, sometimes you go to, from 50 to 60 and you don't see anything changing, or from 50 to 100 and nothing changes, uh, why would you change it, right? So that's uh, something that we can do. You can see a big difference here in between these two objects, more than anything in the shadow, the definition and uh, the blurriness that we have in, at the edges of the, of the shadow. And I hope you get the, the idea. Please uh, play with all these parameters. Try to change uh, from one light to another. It's pretty cool to you know manipulate lights and manipulate uh, illumination shadows. It's just amazing. For now, that's it. Thank you very much. I will see you in our next movie and please remember subscribe and comment like the video if you like it obviously if you don't like it uh, don't don't do anything don't say anything <laughs> and I'm just kidding you know uh, we are here because of you and um, I will see you in our next movie thank you very much bye bye for now